Yo, my name is Byron Kreit, aka the song designer, the CEO and president of Miscellaneous Productions, uh, my record label production company here in Charlotte, North Carolina, 704 QC, Queen City, God City, um, East East. How y'all doing? Uh, yeah, damn. Got a lot of titles these days, man. Just trying to <laughs> trying to get my name out there. It feels good to be able to find be able to say that, but yeah, that's that's, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, when I graduated from Independence, like uh, I started out, I went to went to uh, Winston State University HBCU, and I, I kind of wanted to go to a black school, and that was the school my brother went to, uh, Hall of Fame on the football team. It was like a, a, a big time uh, free safety uh, there at the school. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. I want to go to. I want to go to HBCU. But a couple years in, I kind of got an opportunity to move down to Florida and go to Full Sail University. And that is like my school. Because that school was like, you know, they taught us everything that I want to learn about music. And, you know, it was all around uh, media entertainment school. But it was like, <laughs> like the, the studios that, like, you know, it's a music school. So. They got multi-million dollar studios, state-of-the-art facility, man. It was just amazing down there, man. And just being in Florida, where it's warm all year round, it was a great experience for me. And, you know, they, they even had uh, BT was doing the spring bloom down there. I got a lot of opportunities to go down there and go to Miami. And I had some time, some fun at some events. But the beauty of being there was that the most fun I had was going to school. Cause I, I love what I was learning there, man. And it was like fun being at a place where like, I wanted to wake up and go to class because I couldn't wait for us to talk about this topic. Or I couldn't wait for us to talk about MIDI or, or synthesizers or something like that. Like that, that was a fun experience. I love that. Well, I can, I want to say unfortunately, but I can, can now probably say fortunately, I, I never really worked in a big time studio. You know, doing the whole route that they, they would teach me in school to start off as an intern and then work your way up at a big studio. I did my own home studio thing and got to a point now where I can, like, just playing around. I can make some shit that sounds better than a lot of big boy studios, a lot of big boy engineers, big boy studios. And that's like, like, just, just, just rushing through a project. So when I take my time to sit down and do something, it's like, Hey, learning how to do all this shit myself, maybe it, maybe that's that's cool, you know what I mean? And, and now it's got to the point where, okay, I can produce the records. Well, how about I start my own label? Instead of selling beats and selling studio time, how about I just run my own label and just produce the records I want to produce? And because I took a couple graphic design classes when I was at one set state, I kind of knew a little bit about graphic design, so it's like, hey, I can get into the, the, the doing the artwork and shooting the videos too. So it's kind of like, I just want to get to a position where, hey, I might not make as much money because it's not guaranteed. I'm not working for anybody else. But at the same time, being able to have complete control over my project, complete control over my music. I can, I can make the music I want to make and shoot the video, do the, all the artwork so I can control how it's, how it's presented to the masses. It might be, it might take a while for it to catch on, but hey, it's like, <laughs> I got to do all me and put that out there. And since it's my production, hey, it's, it's me. It's not like I made a beat and somebody else got to do what they wanted to and maybe made a song about like killing the baby. And I just wanted to make a beat. You know what I mean? I get to say, okay, this is what the song will be about. This is the topic. This is the lines we're not going to cross. And it's like a beautiful thing being, you know, but it's, it's, Starting from starting from the bottom is kind of hard, but I mean it's like it's better than nothing. The quality of what I'm putting out is so much worth it that when it catch on, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be worth it. So I'm just you know what I mean, getting a name for myself right now and putting out music. But you know when when you're like when you don't have the money that the big time labels use to push records. You just gotta hope, like, like they catch on and people's word of mouth spreads. And eventually, once it's enough, hopefully it'll it'll start to to make a lot of sense to everybody. But I mean, it's kind of like, I guess that's a sacrifice. Either you get control of your own project, or you get a lot of backing behind you. But you got to do it the way that somebody else wants you to do. It. So I guess that's the that's the whole 
not the limb I'm in, but it's something that people would be like, why would you do all this and you can go work for them and get guaranteed money? I mean, I like being in control of what I just Now, the reason why I do music is, is, is pretty deep, you know what I mean? It's just, just loving music, just loving music. Like, like the, uh, I remember growing up, I remember the, my, my favorite melodies, like, Every time I hear these songs, they always bring back memories of when I was a kid. Like the uh, the Shanice, I love your smile. That whole do 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 do. I always remember that, and I always remember before I even knew who Nirvana was, before I even paid attention to rock music. That hello, 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 hello. That always took in my head, and every time I heard that growing up, it was like yeah. <laughs> Like, that's that song, that's that song. And then when I got into college at Winston State, I started actually listening to a lot more rock music. Like, like a lot of songs that was that, I started appreciating rock a little bit more and the sound of the guitar. And it was like, like Nirvana went from, oh, that's that group that did that song to like, oh yeah, I love these dudes. I, I love I love Kurt Cobain, man. I like, I just like, it's like feeling the emotion in his voice, man. It was just something beautiful with that. And it was just, you know what I mean? like. Rappers is good at expressing and using words, but like being able to use your voice to express pain, like not necessarily what you're saying, but just feeling in your voice, that's like something special and I love that. And like, I guess the biggest things that draw me to music is just the whole social engineering aspect of it. Cause me, I take rap serious. So it's kind of like, I look at it like like what preachers were in the time of Jesus, when it was kind of apocalyptic, the 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 the, the empire is taking over and controlling people more, and it's like it's kind of like the way we are with America, but that was Roman times, and they were like you know what I'm saying, they were like kind of trying to use their words to help uplift society, and that's kind of what rap is doing now, but it's an art form, and it's not. I mean, I guess preaching would be an art form too, but it's like. It's more like just using words to communicate while rap is like, you know what I'm saying? You're doing it to a beat, it's on a rhythm. And it's like the same thing that they were doing then. And uh, the one kind of realization that I made today was that, <laughs> like, when I say rappers is Tommy G, well, well, we black, we obviously black. But back then, it's kind of like, <laughs> well, I kind of I, I kind of always appreciated the Hebrew Israelites and, and, the, and the message that they was portraying, but it's just kind of crazy how like I just always looked at like like look at look at look at up we got the minds we got the bodies we got the souls everybody know we got body and soul but our minds been so manipulated since slavery that people don't really appreciate that but when you get stories like a Nigerian girl getting a was so high on an IQ test and you see this guy. Uh, Michael Brown got accepted into 20 colleges with all scholarships. You start realizing, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's not just the, the body and the soul. They got the mind too. But it's just our mind's been diminished so much by this institution that we live in. And it's kind of like, I always knew it was something special about us, but it's like when they say Jesus had hair like wool and skin the color of olives, it kind of clicked on me, like, okay, so they're saying Jesus is black. A lot of people always say that, but then they say Jesus is a Jew. So the fact that they kind of, the Bible's kind of letting us know that, okay, black people are the Jews, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, I just now connected that today. And it's just kind of weird realization because I started, you know what I'm saying, appreciating Hebrew Israelites more. And uh, the the Kendrick has the track Fear on his album where he's talking about uh, like how Deuteronomy talks about the curse where we'll be given to another group of people. And he kind of started to realize, okay, so the people who call themselves Jews now, nah, that's the group we just gave them to. And we're the real Jews. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not a re coincidence that we got all these special qualities about who we are. And it's not a coincidence that they say they describe Jesus the way he was described in the Bible, which is kind of as a black man and a Jew at the same time. Like, you know what I mean? So it, it, now that, that that's weighed in on me, it's kind of like, okay, so <laughs> it just connects the whole thing. Because, like, I don't know, it's just, it's just 
like I always felt like rap was a black thing, and you you hear certain preachers preach a certain way, you always know a black preacher, a black preacher voice, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like this expressive nature of us. Okay, so <laughs> the Jews in the Bible were black, Jesus is black, and it's just. <laughs> It's kind of a deep realization. I'm still coming to terms with it because I just realized this about like 30 minutes ago. And it's, it's, it's like, I, you know what I mean? I made a video. I, uh, uh, I made a video on Facebook kind of saying that black people are the real Israelites. I said, well, I said, when you look at the way the world is, it kind of says who the real Israelites are. But I didn't really connect the whole Jesus is a Jew skin of color olives here like wool i just connected that today and it's kind of deep but you know like i say hip-hop is powerful words are powerful period preaching but hip-hop is powerful and it's kind of like the the ones we call jews today are the ones who kind of run our, our industry and it's kind of like is it a coincidence that the people who call themselves jews they basically turning us into the stereotype of what they think we are using this music. So it's kind of like, is it a coincidence that it, things went from, from gangster rap to just all kind of ignorance and then you got rappers wearing dresses and you think about the fact that it's like this is all this industry, like not just the labels, but the, the channels that the, that the music videos are played on the, the, the money that's invested into these labels, they run all these different industries. Like 2% of the population runs all these different industries. And when you think about the fact that rap today is kind of like a, a commercial <laughs> for ignorance, <laughs> like the same way they use, uh, they use like the, 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 the uh, Trix Rabbit and the Lucky Charm Leprechaun to sell cereal. They use rappers to sell the lifestyle that gets us in the prisons, that destroys us, destroys our minds, get us addicted to drugs, get us on guns, get us killing each other, get disorganized. And they kind of use hip hop as like an advertisement for being the N-word. When I say N-word, I mean N-word with the hard R. Because I love calling myself a real nigga, but when I say they turn us to the N-word, I mean it with the hard R. And it's like, they kind of using something they know we this so they're using the power that we have being this to get us to turn ourselves into what they think we are so we great the fact that we rap shows how great we are so they get us to use our rap to destroy ourselves when we could be using the same ability to help build each other up and it's just kind of it's just so deep that you know what i mean <laughs> when you look at the, the power of this music we got the power to change the whole world from a bedroom. And it's being used to get us pumped into a whole school to prison pipeline, get us to destroy ourselves. And it's kind of like I always wanted to use, instead of signing to a label, instead of, you know what I'm saying, working with artists who's gonna take take what I do and use it as a way to, 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 to add to the problem. I'd rather control my own shit, make my own lab, shoot my own videos, do my own design and be able to do be affect the problem and then instead of being, being part of a downward cycle that's destroying us i want to be part of a cycle that's building us up even if i'm the one that has to start it i mean I'm, it's just a lot of people out here putting positive shit out here but like just the whole business mentality of you know i want to you know be like p diddy dr dre but use it to help build the whole black community up and, and help us restore all the stuff that we lost like through through this this curve like if that's what i like if i got the potential to be able to do that then yeah that's what i want to do well of course that was probably the most interesting fact that i, I love hip-hop so much and it's not just i like listening to music i like making music it's i understand the power of it and understand how this art form can be used to change the world. Well, as soon as I started getting and started planning this stuff out, <laughs> like, I started understanding the world a little bit deeper and became what you call a targeted individual. And it's kind of weird because it kind of, I stumbled upon, like, I guess a big 
Secrets. Illuminati Secrets. And it's kind of started making sense about this whole selling your soul and why people get oaths and shit like that. And it's like, things start clicking. Like, okay, this world's like a, like a video game. It's like a reality show. And unless you're a target individual, you can't really see it like that. Oh no, you better learn some. Well, I guess another interesting topic is just, you know, when I started developing my organization, Son of Africa, I kind of had some weird stuff that started happening to me. And I started researching what was going on. And I came across all these people called targeted individuals. And I'm listening to all these people's stories, reading their stories, and, and the stuff related so deep to what I was going through. And it's kind of like, I started realizing what, like, it started clicking. Like, okay, so this whole world is a, like, computer simulated reality show. Like, like the whole thing is like, was like living in a video game that's, that's, that's real. And, you know what I mean? Once you start going through all these people started talking about certain things, like, like, like the whole street theater and the whole fact that all these different actions going on around them. And I started realizing the whole, this is like being in the Truman Show in the Matrix at the same time. And it's so deep how that connects together. Like, I don't know. It's just weird, like, knowing, okay, you start you start understanding what, why certain things happen to certain groups of people. Why it's like things that, oh, you had to be in the house with me to know that I did that. And then all of a sudden you go out in public and people are talking about something. <laughs> I remember watching one video where the guy's like, you forgot to, he said somebody called him on the phone and said, you forgot to put sugar in your coffee this morning. And it's like certain shit where it's like, okay, there's no camera in my house. So how do they see? Uh, you start realizing how this world really works. So it's like, okay, what's one thing about video games? Okay, you have this stuff called street theater where people are like, it seems like they're performing. They're just being them. But it's like, they just so over dramatic and acting. And they kind of, you feel like the Truman Show. You feel like people are scripted around you. And it's like just understanding when you go through your life and, and people that you know for years, they just seem like they're acting and they're scripted and they're in on something. It's kind of like, I understand why people get so paranoid. And, but it's like the obvious fact of the stuff is like, <laughs> it seems kind of weird, but because I don't like talking about stuff that sounds crazy, but it's like once you're going through it, you start going through all of the, the sounds and you thinking about something that they don't want you thinking about, thinking about in your head. <laughs> and all of a sudden, somebody in another room drops a glass, like, hey, this would be a good idea to bring people together. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're like downtown talking to somebody and, and, and you're like, got this great idea of how to start a social organization. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all, a bunch of construction, like, like a bunch of metal in a construction site just falls down. And it's like, once things start happening so much, it's like, it's hell to deal with because you kind of think that everybody's in on it. And, and like, like, these people on the internet, they, they call it gang stalking because they think there's people like <laughs> reading their minds and stuff. And like, oh, I know you were thinking about that, so I'm gonna talk about this. Oh, you're thinking about something I don't like, so I'm gonna cough real loud right now. <clears throat> and you get like certain sounds, like, like just all around you. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're like a, a target individual because I know like that, just that coughing right there probably started you. But it's like, once, the, once I started like connecting everything together, they started clicking. Okay, this is what people sell they sold for because if they can make bad things happen, they probably making good things happen to people who working for this whole shit. And it was like, you, you get to a point where it's like, okay, it feels like people are in on it, but are the dogs in on it too? Because why is it that when I start doing certain things that I know whoever's watching me don't want to happen, all these dogs will start barking all the time. <laughs> like no no dog barking, no dog barking. You start doing some roof, 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 roof. <laughs> These dogs like across the street, a couple blocks up, but you can still hear them so loud because they like, like big dogs. How is it that I can hear the dogs barking every time I do something? And they, these dogs just barely ever barking. 
birds start chirping as soon as you start thinking about certain things. And it sounds so, quote unquote, schizophrenic. So it's like you're going to keep it to yourself. And I, I've been keeping a lot of this stuff to myself until right now anyway. And it's just, how do you deal with that? Knowing that it's like a game. <laughs> Cause it's like, a, like, I can understand being paranoid because you think everybody's in on it, but then once certain things happen where like, like you're in the house by yourself and then the floorboards start creaking and you start thinking about certain things and doing certain things, you don't want to talk about it because it sounds crazy. And I don't want to be institutionalized for stating facts, but at the same time, this is some weird shit going on. You start thinking about certain words, somebody will walk up to you with a t-shirt with that word on it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm real blessed today. You turn around and see somebody walking up with a shirt that says blessed. How did they know I was gonna say something about being blessed? You talk about eating a banana split, all of a sudden <laughs> you hear a little kid say, I want some ice cream with some bananas on it. And it's like, how did that happen? <laughs> like, it's like just little shit happening all the time. Just kind of kind of questioning your sanity, but then you know you're sane because I've been like, like becoming more productive lately. So it's kind of like, I got my shit together, but all this weird shit's happening. Well, I mean, I guess the biggest point of what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people going through some crazy shit and they call it target individuals. But it's like, when you kind of know, okay, this is all like a reality show. Like this whole world is like a video game. We don't know what we live in, but they watch this like a reality show. And you know that they're doing what they're doing to you. And what they're doing to you is close to what's going on to me. That's a Nigerian is probably doing the same thing too. There's probably somebody like, like a Muslim in, in Saudi Arabia going through the same thing. An old white lady in the Netherlands. Like, it's kind of like so many people going through the same shit. Why don't we all just come together and make the point? Because, I mean... It's kind of hard to, 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 to say, okay, this is what's going on and this is who's doing it. But I guarantee you once enough people start coming together saying, hey, you know that weird shit that dude in that video was talking about? I'm going through the same thing. Once enough people start coming together and start saying that, hopefully like some people who, you know what I mean, is kind of sworn themselves to secrecy and start like revealing some information. So I'm just putting my story out there because I mean, if you want to know something interesting about me, that's the most interesting thing about me. But I mean, my whole thing with that is, if I'm here right now, then maybe God wanted me to go to this so I could get the story out to other people and, and get other people behind me. And it's kind of like, you look at this, and this is, I guess I should say this to other people going through the same thing, targeting individuals. Like, you're going through something that, that's hell, but if we can change the whole world by exposing this secret and letting people know that this is going on, then won't all this bullshit we've been through been worth it? I know people lost a lot of stuff with this, but you never know, it could be worth it, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's really about like really making the sound. Everybody knows about groups of people manipulating the world. Everybody knows about how, how uh, I mean, everybody knows different groups of people that, that's manipulating the world. And everybody knows about all these conspiracy theories and chemtrails and all kind of just brainwashing things using the media. So why not take this story that we got and turn it into something positive, make it worth something, like, you know what I mean? If, if we're going through some bullshit that, that's painful and it can actually change the whole world, let's use that pain to change things. So, I mean, I guess that's the most interesting thing about me because of the fact that, you know what I'm saying, it's a heavy part of my life right now. I'm trying to focus and get on my music thing and get my stuff off the ground, but I'm going through a lot of weird shit that I can't explain and there's a lot of other people going through the same thing so I'm just going to be able to use my, my voice to be able to, to bring awareness to this whole situation that I'm in because yeah it's hell and hopefully this hell will be worth it so I mean I don't know <laughs> I guess I'm going on a long time about that topic but hey if you were targeting the individual too man just just let, let's come together. Let, let's get this story out there. Let, let's try to change things. We know what's going on. We know who's doing it. And there's a lot of people out here who want to understand why all these conspiracies work together. So, you know what I mean? Hey, just get behind me, I guess. 
Well, my name is Byron. Yeah, and uh, I guess <laughs> I can speak forever about that topic if I needed to. But I just want to make a short video just to get myself out there so people understand who I am and what I represent, man. So. If y'all really want to do something about this situation and you're a target individual, get behind me. If you're a black man and you want to do something about your situation as a black man, get behind me. But I got some talents, I got some God-given abilities, and I'm going to use them to the best of my ability to help do something about this world. Because, you know, the whole thing about this whole God's chosen people, God's real people, God's people <laughs> being cursed, as you say, the curse is going to be lifted. So... <laughs> Like, I, like I've been saying, like this, our minds, bodies, and souls is like our vibranium. So why not create our own Wakanda, man? <laughs> we got this ability, we got everything we need, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do my part, I hope y'all do y'all part. And if you don't wanna do your part, support me while I'm doing mine. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, I'm Byron Christ. Uh, on Miscellaneous Productions, I got an organization, social organization called Son of Africa. Yeah. I love my city. So, uh, anybody out there? <laughs> yeah, all y'all out there, stay blessed. Stay blessed. <laughs> all right, peace out. East, East, QC. <laughs> I love y'all. Love everybody. Love my people. All y'all stay up. <laughs> and please stay blessed and stay safe. <laughs>